welcome back to how to be bad guys in this video guys we're going to go ahead and show you how to guys remove or how to replace cylinder head of a Ford 3.5 engine guys this one is using Ford Edge 19 MKX uh, Ford Fusion as well guys uh, it's used in Ford Flex so many vehicles so if you have a 3.5 and you need to replace the cylinder head or a head gasket this is the video guys for you uh, now <laughs> We will guys have the video from start to finish, okay? We'll have the total specs as well on the channel. More than 200 videos will be made, guys. Please subscribe. Our goal is to save you as much money as we can. So, please guys subscribe and let's start on the process now. First thing that we'll be using is a socket 732s. I don't know which metric that will be, but this one fits the best on, on the screws that we need to remove. There is one cover that we need to remove underneath with that socket and then we can get to uh, to the drain plug okay so we're under the vehicle now okay one screw is out two Three, four, five. Wear eye protection because dust and mud will fall off the plastic. Okay, this is number six right there. So let's see, we have two clips that we need to remove. You pull the center piece out and then you pull the rest of the clip out. And just one more. Okay, over there. Sometimes they will be really stuck if they have mud in them. So you just want to wiggle them as much as you can. And this clip did break and sometimes they will. Uh, we will have on the channel guys, uh, check out the link to our Amazon store and see where we get our clips from okay so you can get replacement clips for really good price usually a huge quantity of clips okay now just pull that uh, outer piece and the plastic comes out like that okay so we're underneath on the left side on the driver side of the vehicle that hole right there that's where the coolant will come uh, will start coming out so we have that bucket ready so we're going to collect it now we need to go ahead and turn uh, the radiator pork okay and this one is really hard to see so we'll try our best actually to show you I'm trying to see if I can find an angle where I can show you a little bit better okay so I'm under the car now guys let me show you okay where the drain plug now is okay if you come right here okay uh, I'm trying to get the light correct here so I can show you okay you can see this one right here okay this is your drain plug and this one you will have to use a socket or an allen wrench to get it loose okay so you can see we have an offset box wrench 19 millimeter there and it works perfectly so you need to just get it loose okay and after that it starts getting loose by hand pretty easy so let's do a little bit, you see it's not very tight. And it will start leaking at one point, so you have to be make you have to make sure that you're not right, right underneath it. After that you can even try turning it by hand after it gets loose. Uh, it's not very tight, it's, uh, initially it's very tight and after that it's not. 
So you start draping, have the bucket there. Okay, get it, get it loose all the way. And you can see coolant's coming out. Okay, right there, coolant's coming out. What do you have to do next, guys? You have to open the coolant reservoir. Now, I forgot to mention, drain the coolant only when it's cold. Because if it's cold, it can severely burn you, it can be under pressure, and that could hurt you really, really bad. Once you open the reservoir cap, you start coming out even faster. Do not remove the plug all the way, because if you do, it's going to come out of everywhere and you will not be able to collect it. So we'll just let it drain like that for probably about 5 to 10 minutes. You can see the coolant in the reservoir is already dropping here. After that it will come out of the radiator, the engine as well, so it will take a little bit of time. Okay, so you can see guys, practically it's almost done. Probably need another 2-3 minutes, but you can go ahead now, after that part pretty much. Close the drain plug, you can close it by hand and then get it tied with a wrench. Do not over tighten those because it's plastic, the radiator as well, and you don't want to uh, you don't want to crack that thing. So be be careful how you do it. Okay, we'll get our tight now. So next, you can see we do not have current anymore in the overflow bottle. We're going to disconnect the hoses here, and uh, so we have that. Okay, little hose that we need to disconnect on top. So we need to. Okay, grab that clamp, gently pull it out, do not twist here, because you're going to break it. Okay, even though it has a metal sleeve inside of it, those are known to be easy to crack. Now we have the big one on the bottom, which is a little bit hard to get to. And uh, we can actually remove it in a little bit after we get the screws out of the way, that way it can move a little bit. We have the 8mm socket here now, that's what we're using. Okay, this one is out now. We just have few more to remove. Okay, now working on the second one there, on the third one, excuse me, second on the, on that side. Okay, now we can move it a little bit and twist it so we can get to that clamp now. So let's see if we can reach it a little bit easier now. Okay, if I turn it this way. Okay, almost came out and now we need to move just a little bit more down. It's a little bit inconvenient place. Okay, we call it now. Perfect. This one came out, you can see the bracket is off. Or the clamp, excuse me, now just Twist the holes left and right a little bit. Okay, and pull the overflow bottle out of the way. So next we need to uh, jack the front right side of the vehicle up. And uh, by doing that we need to remove the wheel. Okay, now you can remove the fender liner, the whole fender liner. 
or uh, what we will try to do is just remove a few clips so we can fold it and actually access the crankshaft. Okay, first to align everything, but uh, I would recommend just to go ahead and remove the whole fender liner so it's not in the way. Okay, let's see if those clips sometimes will not come out. If they are stuck really bad, use that spray guys, this thing is amazing, one of the best sprays on the market. Uh, I'll just go ahead and spray a little bit, okay, on the clip. Okay, where they get in each other. A little bit on this one here. Okay, let's see if they're going to come out now. Perfect, watch now, otherwise you're going to break those guys. Because they get stuck so bad. If they still don't come out, just move them a little bit and spray so we can penetrate on the inside. But <laughs> check out, this thing is, I'm telling you, this is the best penetrating spray and uh, interform right here, thin super, check it out, it's a multi-purpose spray that will be listed in the description of the video below. So this is a 732 socket. Okay, underneath we have a, a screw that we need to remove. Three of them actually. Two, two of them. Okay. We need to remove those two, two screws. After that, we need to come with the same two and start removing here as well. Okay, ours, this one is broken there, you can see, so we remove it, but... Some on the back side here. Now the clips guys, okay those clips if they get stuck, check out how easy those things come out. We use special spray, lubricating penetrating spray. So we'll show you what it is on the next clips. You need to pull the center piece out and then pull the whole clip as well. Now, Check out, I'm talking about these clips right here. If you try to pull them out, usually, okay, they will break. So if you use some interphone spray, check it out in the description of the video. This is the best uh, spray that we, we've used, European formula here. Okay, really, really good one. So I'm going to just spray a little bit on the clips. Okay, this one here as well. Okay, and you can see how easy they come out. Try to spray between both pieces. That way it can penetrate. Okay, check this thing out now. Without the spray, you're going to break it. Okay, and if you spray a little bit of spray. Just one second, guys, and that thing is amazing. I'm telling you, this is the best thing that we purchased for our shop. To save us a little bit time on labor and parts. Okay, right here we have one more that I forgot to spray. Okay, the one down there now. Perfect. Right here we have one more, one more screw that we need to remove and here we have one more clip towards the top, okay, this one is not going to come out so let's just apply a little bit of spray between both parts, okay perfect, let's see now. You can see it came out. Let's see if anything else is holding now. I think we should be able to pull it out. So okay, check out all the stuff that came out here, the dirt. And I don't know whatever else has been stuck there during the years. So underneath it looks like we have one more clip. Okay, right there, in the corner. So this clip is down there, 
Always, always use jack stand and throw the tire under the vehicle so if something goes terribly wrong it's not going to smash you underneath ok perfect this one came out now so I don't think anything else is holding that fender line, liner let's, uh, let's check it out now I think we have enough to plant a few a few trees here, check it out And some here on the front as well. Okay, that piece came out, guys, just like that. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to drain the oil, engine oil. Uh, that way we can make sure that uh, everything's prepared for later. So drain plug right there. Okay, we'll drain it and see uh, how much we're going to get out now. We need to have a big container on the bottom. So it came loose now. We're going to drain it. Always inspect your oil plug as well guys, every time, seals and all that stuff when you remove it. So we'll let it drain and we'll continue. So we'll just install the oil plug, we don't need it anymore, uh, we drain the oil. So what you need to do first guys, okay right here you can see this is the MUF sensor that we will need to disconnect so we can lift that thing up. There is one red thing on the bottom, okay you need to slide it back, then press down here, okay, and disconnect the sensor. Now you can see this is the safety lock that we need to pull, otherwise it's not going to work. When it's locked it's like uh, going forward, so you need to push back, then press down, okay right here. It's going to activate that clip and you pull it out. We need to remove the air filler box, okay, open it on this side, slide it towards the left, pull it up a little bit. After that, we need to get a, okay, we need to get a screwdriver, okay, we need to get one hose clamp, loose, okay, back there, this clamp right here, okay, with a, uh, we'll be using a flat screwdriver now flathead screwdriver. All the tools guys and parts that we use will be listed in the description of the video below for your convenience. So get it loose, make sure it's loose enough otherwise you can damage your intake boot. Okay and now we need to disconnect that hose right here. Check this thing out now how you do that. Okay you need to come on this side like that. Okay and pull it out, okay like that. So this is guys the cover that came out of it, now we need to proceed with the next step. Okay so after that we forgot to mention there is one more hose right here, just pull it out, this is for the booster and you can go ahead and pull the whole thing out of there and we can proceed with the next step now. So we need to find a socket now, okay that's going to fit the throttle body bolts. And uh, you can see now right here, okay, we have one bolt here, one, two, then we have three here, four bolts that we need to remove with eight millimeter socket. And uh, after that we need to see there is one bolt underneath, I believe. So we're going to check in just a second to see if we need to do anything there. So eight millimeter socket, remove these four bolts. Okay, perfect. Now, okay, this is the ball there. Second, third. We have a video how to clean throttle body as well. Check it out. 
it can improve your fuel economy and get rid of engine light codes and also improve the vehicle performance. Okay, now we need to pull it down. Okay, that connector here, you can see that safety pin, the red one needs to come up like that and after that you need to press down right here. Okay, and just pull it out. By pressing down there, okay, you can see you release the clip. Sometimes if it's stuck, you need to push the whole clip in, then press in, then pull it out. Okay, just like that. So now with the total body out of the way, you can see that bracket right there, this is with 8mm socket, this thing needs to go. Okay, perfect. This one is out. Now, <clears throat> we need to get a plastic, to, uh, plastic uh, clip removal too, okay, and we need to pull Okay, oh, you have two options. You can pull the hoses out or you can go ahead and pull those holders here and just pull them to the side. We'll just leave ours like that. Okay, right here. Okay well, guys, that thing that you see here, that mouse poop, from what it looks like. Yep. So, uh, <coughs> we'll be replacing that cover on the back as well. You, you can see the vehicle was on a farm, so probably mouse got in the engine compartment one time and they decided to poop on top of the engine. So now with the 8mm socket we have a few more bolts that we need to start disconnecting now. Okay, and those will be pretty pretty tight. One, two, three, four on this side, five, six so far. So <coughs> Let's go ahead and get them loose. Every time you remove throttle body or intake, it's recommended to replace the gasket there. Okay, go ahead and remove the bolts. Perfect, now. Okay, grab the intake, upper intake manifold. Okay, and pull it out. Now we need to see that that hose needs to be disconnected right there. So this one you press in on the yellow part. Okay, and pull it out. Press in there on that yellow part. Okay, let me show you again. This thing, you need to just press in and pull the hose out. Okay, and let's see if we have anything else. There is one more hose there holding, but we can pull that thing out a little bit until we can reach it. This hose is for the vacuum. Okay, this one. Okay, right there. Okay, so let's see if we can get to it with the pliers so we can remove that clamp. Okay, now all we have to do is grab that hose, twist it off and pull it out. And this one will be stuck Okay, really bad sometimes. Okay, I just disconnected it. I pulled it out. Now it's important not to drop anything in the intake, lower intake holes there, because it will go in the valves. Okay, so you have to be extremely, extremely careful. Now on the back side, there is one more breather hose that we need to disconnect. Okay, you can see right there. You cannot reach those. This one actually, I think ours came out of the valve cover. We'll check in just a second and see <coughs> how it attaches. So we know guys what to expect as well. Okay, right here we're supposed to have one more bolt and somebody didn't install it last time. Check this thing out. Okay, there is one more bolt here holding and ours was not installed. Okay, you can see that, okay, that metal bracket right there, that's where the bolt goes. So, Whoever worked on it last time just totally forgot this bolt. So there is one more wire on the back side that we need to disconnect. Okay, this one right there. Okay, and the upper intake manifold came out. Let me show you, this is the wire now. Okay, you need to press down right here. 
pull it out. That's where the breather hose connects. Okay, right here. And also this is the bracket, okay, for the intake manifold. Now we are going to cover the holes here so we don't drop anything in them. So you can see that holes here, okay, that tooth. Just get it out of here like that and it will disconnect the holes, pull it out. Now we'll need to get 8 millimeter socket, okay, to remove the ignition coils. Okay, actually, this one's been replaced. One of the bolts, this, this bolt has been replaced. Somebody worked on it. And they installed the wrong bolt. So it's supposed to be eight, but in our case, one of them is probably a seven. So we'll check in a second and see. I'll grab the bolts, okay, so we don't lose them because those are super easy to lose. Okay, yep, this is a seven millimeter there. Perfect. Now, how you disconnect them, you can see that red thing, guys, on every ignition coil, you need to push back. Okay, this is the safety lock, then push down here. And pull the wire out. Perfect. They do get stuck a little bit. So you need to wiggle them out of the way. Now you can go ahead and remove them. Those ignition coils are replaceable even if you need to switch them from a different cylinder. It doesn't matter in which order you install them later. Perfect, this one, the seal came out, so we need to install it on the coil. Okay, great. Okay, now the rear ones, you will need to use a ratchet. We'll not be able to get our little impact there to save us a little bit of time. And uh, pretty much we'll need to do the same thing, okay, we'll need to get the bolts out. Perfect, and uh, then we'll need to disconnect the wiring harness as well. So the same thing, just push the red thing out of the way, press down. And those things are super, super tight. Okay, one came out, one on the other side. So just one left here. Perfect. And remove the bolts. Careful not to drop them anywhere. It's important to cover your in, uh, lower intake manifold because otherwise you can drop something in the cylinders, in the valves, okay, pull those out, okay, just like that, just one more to go. Okay, this guy is stuck a little bit there. I don't think they've ever been removed, to be honest with you. From what it seems like, especially the rear ones, the front ones might have been removed, the rear ones not. Okay, now. So next, uh, we'll need to remove valve covers, so we have uh, quite a bit of disassembly to do that. Uh, we'll start with the front one now. Okay, we need to clear all the wiring harness, pull the dipstick out. You can see because it's on the, it's actually on the cover, on the valve cover on top. We'll need to disconnect the uh, Okay, the uh, camshaft sensors here. So press in, pull out. Now, okay, perfect. This one is out. We have one more on the back side, which is very inconvenient to reach there. With the camera, so let me unhook this one and I'll show you. Okay, we have it disconnected. Okay, so that's good. Now, uh, on the back side, okay, you can see right here we have the uh, wiring harness for the, this is for the oxygen sensor, okay, bank one, sensor one, I believe, or sensor two will be this one. So we need to disconnect this one because it will be in the way as well. 
So we have this one disconnected uh, right here. There is okay. Let's flip it a little bit sideways because we're trying to get more light. Right here, there is one tooth. Okay, this tooth. Press down on it and disconnect it. Pretty simple. Uh, after that, you can see right here we have another one. Okay, disconnect this one now. And next. We need to disconnect the wiring harness from this bolt. The one over here as well. Okay, perfect. And let's see what else is in the way. Here you have to disconnect. Uh, <coughs> you can see the wiring harness from right here. Our clamp is broken, so we need to replace this one. That's how we got the car. And uh, let's see if we have anything else holding there. So now with the, uh, with the 10 millimeter socket, we'll start removing the bolt. We have the torque specs on the channel, guys. So check it out later for torque specs. Perfect. We have on the front. Two more. Okay, this one we need to catch it good because it's not too damaged. One more in this corner right here. Okay, let's see if that valve cover will come off or anything else is holding, but let's do the rear one quick too so we can remove both of them at the same time and not get oil everywhere. So unfortunately the rear ones we have to do by hand because we cannot get the impact, it's not short enough. Even though this is a great, great impact guys, it's been abused so much at the shop and we've been using it for 5 years now I think, 4 or 5, it works great. So check it out, it, it will be listed in the description of the video below, something that I would definitely recommend. Okay, you can see we are getting two of them, after that, third one there. Okay. It will, take, it will take a little bit of time, so but I want to show you where all the bolts are, that way you know what to expect. Okay, one more in this corner here, and then we have the one on the downside and one on the side. So you can see, usually once you get those loose, they start going by hand. So pretty much what you see on the front cover, you have the same thing on the back cover as well. Not much different. Okay, let's see how many more.
And I think after that we just have one more back there and one on the side. So uh, once we remove them, okay, I'm going to show you on each valve cover where to expect all the bolts. That way you know, because it's, a, it's practically impossible to stick the camera back there and show you how to do it. On that one there, you might need to use extension because uh, you have the engine hook there, the one that you uh, chain up the engine if you need to pull it out. So that's what we're using for ours. We have timing, chain videos, all kind of stuff on this thing guys. So please, please subscribe to the channel now. Let's go ahead and see if we can actually get them loose. If they're going to pop up or the silicone gasket will be stuck really bad. So you have to make sure that if you, uh, if you Try on it, you don't crack anything or damage anything, so you have to do that only on a spot that it's made to. Okay, to be pried a little bit. Okay, just very gently so you don't damage anything. It came loose a little bit, you can see that it's moving. The gasket might be stuck. Okay, maybe a little bit on this side here. If we come and try to pry it a little bit. Okay, all we have left now is on this side, right here. Keep in mind that it goes in the camshaft sensors as well, so <clears throat> that gasket okay, will be stuck a little bit. Now, let's see if we can start pulling that thing out. Okay, came out of there. Now we need to lift it up a little bit. Okay. You might leave some oil as well, so be careful. Okay guys, and this is the front valve cover out of the way now. So let's do the rear one now. Okay, again it will be stuck where uh, that camshaft position sensor is located. It's a good thing guys that you watched the video because we just found one hidden ball there, okay. And uh, it's right by the camshaft position sensor. It's really hard to see, so pretty much it has like double bolts there, so. Make sure you get this one loose as well. Okay, now we need to start pulling it. This, this time it should come out. Just wiggle it a little bit, it will be stuck in the sensor. We applied a little bit of lubricating spray so it can slide out of it. Okay, it's almost out. Perfect. So, let us show you now where all the bolts are. Okay, now this is the rear one. This is the front gas uh, cover. Right here. So. If you look at them, the rear one has one extra bolt, this one that we didn't know of. So all together on the back one, on the rear one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And on the front one you have one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, looks like this one has 11 as well. Let me double check everything. Yep, because this one has the side bolt here, and this one is behind the uh, behind actually the camshaft position sensor. So both uh, valve covers are out of the car now. Every time you remove them, I recommend to put new gaskets, the whole kit, including the spark plug holes and the uh, variable uh, valve timing solenoid holes as well. Now we need to get a wood block, the jack itself, and we're going to go ahead and support the engine on the bottom, okay, with a wood block on the oil pad. Okay, right there. We'll need to pump it a couple of times. Okay, that's it. So that thing should have no, okay. That way we shouldn't have any any weight on the engine mount. Now we'll need to start removing a few bolts now and uh, we'll be able to pull that thing out. So we're going to spray now. Okay, these bolts right here, that bolt. So we can go ahead and remove that uh, 13 millimeter nut. Now we we'll need to get a deep socket. Okay, because you can see this is a pretty long, long bolt there. And this one will be probably pretty, pretty tight too. Okay, came loose. Now one more bolt next to it. So we'll get a little impact. Okay, one nut out. Now one bolt. We can pull that plate up. Hopefully. Let's see if it's going to come up or not. Oh, it's going to go in with the engine mount at the same time, I think. We'll be able to pull it out with the engine mount in just a little bit. So now we're going to get a 15 millimeter socket and Okay, we'll remove three nuts. Four nuts, excuse me, four. Okay, and there is one more towards the back. So I will explain where each one of them is just in a second. Okay, let me show you now where they are, so you can see. One, two, three, and the one under the thing, four, right there. Okay, on the last one, you have to be careful that the engine doesn't start dropping. If it does, you need to jack it up a little bit. Okay, so we'll be careful on the last one now. Okay, everything's good in our case. So, now, you can see right here, we have two bolts, and we have one like that towards the back, okay, over there, that we need to remove. So, all together, three bolts, two here, and one back there. So, those are with 18 millimeter socket.
Okay, in this one we have to get extension because I, I think that thing is pretty pretty tight to be honest with you. So we'll get the breaker bar here and see if that big tool will help. Okay, perfect one. Starts coming loose. Now the second one here. Perfect, now we have one more towards the back. So let's see which way we are going to get to this one now. Okay, we'll need to go on the other side of the hose. So we'll see if we can get an extra extension to come up so it's not uh, that hose is not in the way. You have to be careful when you work with all these extensions so something doesn't snap. So let's get the gloves because you can seriously hurt yourself. Okay, things are really really tight on this car. Okay. Game loose. Now we can just go ahead and try to re Okay, one came out. Okay, that impact guys, little bitty thing, but that's pretty powerful for being so little and it's very handy so you don't have to turn everything by hand all the time. So, this is the bolt, it has thread locker on it, that's why they don't come off so easy, you can see that blue thing, that's thread locker. Okay, so this one still extremely, extremely tight. Okay, perfect. Now, let's see if we can pull that metal bracket up. Okay, what I'll do, okay, hold on a second, I'll just pump the engine a little bit up, okay, but it released. Otherwise, you can pump the engine just a little bit up and it will come up. Now, we can grab that mount, guys, okay, and pull it out of here. So, now, guys. Right here you can see that bracket, that bracket will need to be removed. Okay, let me just remove that thing because it uh, messes with the light. Okay, we have one bolt here. Okay, we have one towards the back. Okay, right there. And one underneath. So, we have all together three bolts that we'll need to remove. And this one is 15 millimeter. So, okay, okay, 15 millimeter. We're going to hold the engine now. A little bit, you have to support it. 
with one hand or somebody holding it. Okay, wow, one person is getting them loose. So, you can see we got one loose already. So, we'll, what we'll do actually, we'll remove one of them. Okay, after that we'll need to jack the engine up a little bit uh, so we can reach the other bolts. But the one that we can reach on the front, okay, we're going to go ahead and remove it now, all the way. So, this is it, you can see one of the bolts is coming out. Pretty long bolt, very long bolt by the way okay now we we'll need to jack the engine up probably a little bit even more now okay so we can reach the other the other bolt so we jack the engine a little bit up and now we're removing that bolt towards the back here So it's almost out, you can see guys, those are extremely long bolts and uh, really hard to get to sometimes. Okay, and this is the second bolt. Okay, this one is a little bit shorter as you can see. Now we have one more underneath right here that we'll see if we can reach from here or we need to drop the engine and reach through the rail, okay, on the bottom. So this is guys the third bolt. Okay, we got it loose, but we cannot pull it this way. So what I'm going to do, I'll bring the engine down a little bit. Okay, you have to be extremely careful. Make sure that there is nobody underneath. Make sure you don't damage anything. Just go slow. Okay, and once the engine drops, okay, we'll be able, if we can, pull that bolt out now. Okay, you can see where it is right there. So if I lift the engine mount up. Okay, let's see if we can pull it out. What else is holding here now? Just a little bit more down. Probably we need to go down. Okay, you can see where the bolt is. So let me see if I can just pull Okay, the engine down just uh, here, more. Okay, let's try now. It went down just a little bit, so... Okay, perfect. You can see that bolt actually. I think it's made that way, or ours is made that way, I don't know. If somebody worked on it. Uh, but it's cut right here, so it can come out a little bit easy that way. Now, what I'll do, I'll just jack it up. Okay, we need to go ahead and jack the engine up again. Okay, you always have to make sure that your jack is good. Okay, on the open with a wood block, everything's good there, so. We will lift it up. Okay, and, and this is that engine mount bracket right here out of the way so you can see how much room we are gaining so far so we'll place that ratchet okay in the hole right there go clockwise while you're doing that okay one person needs to go ahead and release the belt okay from the AC compressor or the okay or the crank pulley doesn't matter which one, never stick your fingers between the belt and the pulley itself. Okay, because you can severely smash your finger, guys. Okay, so I just need to do the one on top here a little bit because I couldn't release it all the way. It's practically loose, but we need to just go a little bit more on the tensioner. So, 
let's see if we can pull it out it's very limited room if you cannot place a okay let's get it in again if you cannot place a ratchet in the tensioner I'll explain what needs to be done guys okay let's go again okay and I need to pull it on the bottom okay came off the AC compressor here you can see okay now the only thing holding here I need to in our case I'll need to move the engine down just a little bit okay because the belt gets smashed between the okay the frame and the engine there so now okay the belt dropped on the bottom now <coughs> we're going to remove okay three bolts with eight millimeter offset box wrench So let's see if those things will start going by hand or they will not. Okay, this one is going, let me see if I can... Okay, start those here. And just the one on the bottom is holding a little bit. Okay, let me see how tight that thing is now. Okay, it tries to go by hand, but it doesn't. It's pretty tight bolt. So still catching a little bit here and there. I wonder if we can okay move the tensioner a little bit so it's not hanging on it. So we're ready guys to go ahead and remove that bolt now. Finally it's going by hand, then it stops. It's a little bit inconvenient place for that bolt. Hopefully the other ones don't go like that because it's really a pain. <coughs> the way that engine is designed is just no fun to work on. It's one of the, I think it's like top 10 reliable engines ever built. But if you have to do some work on that thing, it's no fun guys. So you can see how long the bolt is. Okay, like that. So let me go ahead, okay, and I'll grab and remove this one here quick. Okay, so all those will come out. Okay. We just have one more after that for the tensioner. So let's see if it's going to come out. Okay, almost out, perfect, and now let's go ahead and grab the tensioner and pull it out, this is it guys. Okay guys, so what we've been doing here so far, on the power steering pump is removed, 
Uh, you have a special tool that you have to use to release the belt, guys. Okay, to release the power steering belt and to install it. We don't have the tool, so we'll see if we can do it without the tool. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to order it. Uh, but there is three bolts on the power steering pump. Okay, those three bolts there on the back side of the engine. Two on the bottom, one on top. So we had to remove it so we can go ahead actually, okay, and remove the uh, the cover here. You can see the timing cover as well. Next we'll bring the engine down and why we do that so we can actually, uh, okay, let me see. I need to move the power steering pump out of the way a little bit. Okay, to make sure that we are not, okay, catching it. We'll bring it down more. Okay, perfect, like that, like that. Okay, that's enough. And we should be able to go ahead and get the crankshaft pulley removed now. All we need is a little compressor, guys. That Dewalt, it's amazing because it goes to 165 PSI. You can find this one listed in the description of the video below. Next, right here, we have the impact. Okay, 18 millimeter socket, and now if it doesn't wanna, okay, let me explain it. If it doesn't wanna get loose, okay, what you can do, try to get it on tightened and hit it for a couple of seconds, only two seconds, and then start getting it loose again. So let's see if ours will have a hard time coming off now. No, not at all. You can see with that little bit too, okay, it came out pretty pretty easy so let's go ahead and see if that harmonic balancer is going to come out or we have to do anything special like a pour or anything like that okay to pull it out so I'll spray some penetrating spray now right here between the okay crankshaft and the pulley okay like that let it soak for a few minutes and see if it's going to come off or we'll need to get our pour and start getting that thing out. So we'll get the bolt now guys. Okay, we're going to install it on the pulley. Just get it tied a little bit by hand. Okay, you probably want to get about five revolutions at least. We'll get the pour here. Okay, and see if that is heavy duty enough, otherwise we have to find a bigger one okay to remove that thing now so let's go ahead and see how it's going to fit there and now we need to just get it tight okay let me see this one it looks like it's a probably 13, 12, let's see what size it is. Okay, perfect. It's uh, staying there now. Okay, so, okay, this one's too big. So most likely, okay, need to find a socket somewhere. 12, let me see if 12 is too, Yep, yep, it's 30, 13 millimeter, okay, right there, with a little impact now, okay, let's see if it's going to take it off, you have to go slowly, doesn't come off okay hope oh, it is it is coming out okay a little bit so now we're going to get it loose and what we'll do we'll get the bolt tied on a little bit okay uh, get the bolt loose actually my bad if we get the bolt loose a couple of revolutions but you have to make sure that you have enough thread screwed in 
otherwise okay what's going to happen uh, you're going to strip the thread on the crankshaft and you're your guys in big trouble so we got a socket actually okay with uh, with adapter here and that way okay we can place that socket here inside okay and we're going to install the puller inside of the socket okay we need to get it a little bit loose that way we're not going to be uh, well, we're not going to be scared about the thread about the bolt about damaging anything we'll start getting it tight now okay and let's see now came out guys okay you can see like that that way it centers itself okay and it comes out super nice okay and easy you can see just like that so now next step okay this time in cover guys okay you can see we're going to start removing bolts so we're going to remove three four five six seven eight nine bolts that we can reach from here now and then we're going to go to the top and remove more so that's what we'll be doing next we'll just go ahead and remove them and uh, make sure you stand till the end once we remove the timing cover I'm going to share with you where all the specific bolts are okay right here as you know this one we already removed it uh, however we just installed it with two bolts while we were storing the vehicle and waiting for parts so we can just uh, make sure that nothing drops inside so now we're on top guys okay more bolts to remove okay let me see now one here you have two right here you have two like that on the back side we have to disconnect the uh, ground wires it's very important to install your ground wires later because if you don't okay your engine might not work might not even start So all together you have three ground wires that you need to take care of. Okay, this is it right there. Now we'll remove uh, more bolts and we'll show you where things are next. So here now, on top, we are ready to remove. Okay, a few more. okay and those actually we might not even need to remove them from what i can see okay these two they can stay on i just realized that but we'll just get them out because you can see on the back they don't go all the way through the cover okay those are long ones so they definitely need to go. And just two more. Perfect, now the timing cover guys is really stuck to the engine block in the cylinder head because all that is silicone so later all that will need to be clean and we need to reseal it. Now we're going to see if anything else is holding and from what it seems like I don't think okay, anything else is holding just to make sure we don't have a hidden bolt here and there and if we stick a screwdriver somewhere between the two pieces but you have to be extremely careful not to crack or damage or scratch anything we should be able to pull the two pieces out okay so this this end started coming loose now we'll try this one a little bit here so 
so we need to pry just a little bit more, but you have to be careful, you can see right here where we stick the screwdriver a little bit, so we'll get a little bit of a smaller screwdriver that we can fit in. Okay, let's see if anything else is holding somewhere, because that will be a lot of silicone too, guys, a lot of silicone to remove. Okay, so you can see guys how much silicone came out And now would be a good thing to get to the parts store guys eBay something because we just cracked ours as you can see right here And it's still not coming out quite a bit on the bottom it cracked Okay, and it's still holding so that's why you have to be extremely careful we weren't in our case we could have skipped that step and show you that everything's fine, but it's not in our case. So better know what could happen, guys. Okay, so you know what to, what you can avoid. So the bottom piece. Okay. Is the one that is holding more, and we'll explain why in just a minute when we get everything out. This is due to the fact, okay, let me get it with my hands here. Okay, due to the fact that there is glides, metal glides that go in it. Okay, you can see that metal glide right there, one there, and one on the other side. Well, just one, one that was holding guys, and we cracked our cover because of that thing. So let's go ahead and see if we can pull that thing out. Now we're hitting a little bit here on the holes, so I might need to go down. Maybe a little bit down with the engine. So we're not hitting the hole so much. Okay, let me just gently go down. And now maybe we need to go up, we'll see in a second. So we'll remove the nut here for the power steering reservoir. See if we can pull it up a little bit. Okay, there is one more nut. And if we can relocate it towards uh, the side a little bit. You can see if we can pull that piece out now. Okay, we have to be extremely careful because we already broke enough things. So, this is the piece guys, right here. It's supposed to come in one piece, but in our case it came in two. So with 8mm now, we are going to remove one of the bolts for the tensioner. Okay, and when we do that, it might be spring loaded, so keep your fingers out of the way. Okay, because what could happen, okay, it can shoot a little bit. Always uh, wear eye protection as well. Okay, one out, just one more on the other side now. It's very limited room guys, we're trying our best to get the best view we can so we can show you things, sometimes it's really really hard to.
Yeah, okay, perfect. All we have to do, grab the tensioner now. Okay, and pull it out. Okay, you can see the whole thing came out like that. It's oil filled because it's hydraulic tensioner. So, something guys that I forgot to mention, okay, before we start removing the chain, so uh, as you can see we already removed the chain, but I forgot to mention that that's why that scene is recorded now. Uh, we'll be replacing our cylinder head, okay, that's why we removed it that way, but the correct way will be to bring the engine to uh, TDC point and you're supposed to uh, install your locking tools for the camshafts, okay, on both cylinder heads and then we can, you can proceed by uh, by removing the chain. Okay, that's something that I screwed up and I didn't tell you. Uh, because we'll be removing the cylinder head so we don't even need to use that stuff. On this head we can put it on but on the other one no. So uh, hopefully guys we can clarify that. So we have both plates now on. That's how it should be at TDC point. Okay, you can see that mark will be pointing up. This mark right here will be pointing up. We have the locking plates in place. That's how it should have been right before we removed the chain, guys. And uh, we just screwed up on that part. So you know what not to do because otherwise you can bend valves, guys. Okay, you're supposed to bring it to TDC. Okay, you just lock the. Okay, lock your uh, plates like that, and you can just replace everything and put it together. Now with 8 mm socket, we're going to remove the uh, variable valve timing solenoid mechanism here okay and those will be pretty tight we'll have torque specs and all that on the channel as well guys we'll try to make as many videos as possible to help you as much as we can So you can see only one of the valves, only the intake valves are the ones with the variable timing. The exhaust one does not have variable timing. Okay, just one more bolt there. And let's see if we have anything else. Now what we're doing to this side, we need to do the same thing to the other one. Okay guys, and you can see it came out just like that. So next uh, we need to remove the other variable valve timing solenoid right there. The same procedure guys, okay, with that 8mm, okay, we just need to go ahead and remove the three bolts and we'll continue with the next step once we take this one off. Once we do that, uh, we'll have the timing chain guides, we'll be able to remove those and we'll be able to pull the chain. Okay, you see not much left guys. We're getting, we're getting there. If you have any, any specific okay needs or want to see anything specific about that engine, that vehicle or anything else, uh, drop a comment below guys. Uh, we'll try our best to uh, make a video for your problem. Also, our, uh, some of our subscribers might help you out. Okay, we help each other out quite a bit. I read the comments sometimes and I see people helping each other out and it makes me really happy because that's how we were most of the things too. I mean, with modern vehicles, things do change quite often, so you have to adapt. Okay, removing the second bolt now, and we'll be almost ready for the third one after that. Okay, right there. 
Now you have to hold it, make sure it doesn't drop. Perfect, right there. Gently pull it out. You have to inspect all the seals here. You have to inspect these seals to make sure everything's good. Next, we can pull the timing chain. Oh, we should be able to. We might need to start on one side. Okay, we'll start jumping here and there probably. Okay, let me see if we can do, I can do, oh, yep, it came out on this side. Now, the one right here and the chain is out, guys. Okay, like that. So, Torx 55 socket now and we can proceed with the next step. Okay, let me come on this side. Okay, and that thing is extremely tight guys, extremely tight. Okay, it came loose. So we have to do now just unscrew it. After that you can just, we'll just get the ratchet and start getting it loose. Removing the front and the rear ones, the procedure is exactly the same, guys. Okay, this is the bolt coming out. Perfect, just like that. Okay, you can see the start looking, Torx 55 bit. Okay, now we're uh, we're going to get the, it's going to come out with the chain here. Okay, with the chain. So we need to figure out now, okay, how that's going to work now. So we're going to uh, go ahead and remove the rear one too now. Okay, I think the rear is pocket. This is for the exhaust camshaft. Okay, with the same two. Okay, this one has a big, big washer. So be careful not to drop it, guys, especially in the oil pan. Okay, this is the two, this is the thing. So let me see now if all that will come out. Okay, the tensioner on the bottom as well here, you have to be careful. And we got that sprocket out, you can see like that. So, we're going to go ahead and grab the chain so we don't drop it. This sprocket is going to come out as well. Okay, you can install them only one way. You can see their keys, so you cannot screw that thing up for sure. Next, we can uh, start uh, removing the camshafts. Okay, we're going to, now that plate will be here in the way, this is because they're loaded now, under pressure, so we'll need to, uh, we'll need to turn them a little bit. We'll actually keep the plate there now, we're going to, okay, go ahead and remove, get the bolts loose. Now how you remove all those things that they need to be put together exactly in the same way, the same order. So you have to remember all that stuff. Usually you have, uh, okay, you have 
numbers on them. There you go, like five, six, seven, eight in our case, from what I can see. So we're going to cheat a little bit here with the little impact. So you have to be extremely careful not to drop anything in the engine. Okay, see how they're numbered on top and how they point towards the outside? That's for a reason, guys. Now we need to do the rear one as well. The same way we need to get the bolts loose and we'll remove all, all of them. Okay, you have to be careful because that thing could be under, could be spring loaded somewhere too. Okay, it's holding a little bit on the front from what I can see right here. So eventually it came out. Okay, this is the camshaft. Now, we need to go ahead and remove the rear one just the same way we did the front one. Okay, so we have eight bolts that we will need to remove. I wish it was the front cylinder head so we can show you a little bit better guys, but you don't pick how cars go bad, so. We'll have the torque specs for all that on the channel, so you can check it out and you know what to expect. Okay, this is the last one. Now let's see if the little impact will work, if we can reach there and remove them. Okay, we're going to get each one of them again. This one is one. In my case, it's just one. And we have one more here. We just need to remove that uh, camshaft there now, on the rear side. So we need to get the, let me get the screwdriver. Okay, it came out pretty easy. And just pull that camshaft out of the way as well. So 13 millimeter socket now, and we need to start, okay, removing. Oh, let's see if it's 13. Yep, it is 13. So let's see how tight those things are. Okay, that's extremely tight. I'm going to get my glove squeak, guys, and we'll continue. Okay, this one is loose. This one looks like it's getting loose too. Okay, perfect.
Okay. Now, for this one here, guys, we will need to remove the camshaft sensor. Okay. This is your camshaft position sensor, and we will need to go ahead and remove it because you can see it's in the way and I cannot get to the bolt. So I'll get 8 millimeter quick, 8 millimeter socket. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and remove it now. Let me get that hose because this one still has some coolant from the heater coil. Okay, this is the camshaft position sensor. It's magnetic. I just dropped the two. So now we can reach that bolt as well. Okay. Perfect. Now, I don't remember if I took this one off. No. It's not important how you remove them, it's important how you get those things tight. Okay, this one is loose. This one is loose. Just two more guys. And we have one little one that's hidden. Okay, we're going to show you in just a second where it is. Perfect. Last one right here. Okay, now we have one little one, okay, with eight millimeter that we need to remove over there. I need to get an extension for this one. We're going to show you on the bottom where we removed four nuts for the exhaust because I couldn't get the camera in there so we'll explain what we did there in just a second. Okay. Out. Now we need to get all the bolts loose. I'm going to get the okay the impact here. Let's see. With the extension. Oh it will be too long. So let me find the shorter one quick. Okay, now we can pull each one of the bolts out. One, two. Okay, three bolts. We have four, five here, six, seven, 
Hey bolts guys, hey bolts. Now, it will be the moment of the tooth to see if that cylinder head is going to come up or we have anything else holding there. So let me see if I can move it. So, it looks like it's coming loose now. I don't think there is anything else holding. So usually you have to wiggle it a little bit to come out of the exhaust. Okay, I'm catching here a little bit. Okay, this is guys, the whole cylinder head. Now let me explain what we did to the exhaust because we couldn't show you. Okay, right here there is four nuts that we removed from underneath the vehicle. Okay, and those four nuts hold the exhaust manifold to the catalytic converter. So those are, okay guys, these are the uh, bolts go through here and the nuts are on the bottom. One, two, three, four. So we did remove that. In the meantime, we removed the oxygen sensor, which is right there because it was in the way for one of the nuts. So we got that one out as well. So you can see guys, that's how you remove the head. Now if you're about to put a new head, okay, like what we'll be doing, you have to swap everything from the old head to the new one. Um, you need to do your exhaust manifold, you need to do all your brackets, all that needs to be removed and switched over to the new head. After that guys, every time you have to use new head gasket, new bolts, we have that uh, information on the channel. So you can see where we get our parts from for a really, really good price. Here you have to clean guys everything super super good okay uh, where the new head gasket will be sitting all that needs to be cleaned perfect and then you can guys uh, continue with assembling everything in reverse order we took it apart we'll have all the videos for the torque specs and the timing on the channel so please check it out so uh, thank you guys for watching please subscribe to the channel for more videos and see you guys next time